Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amina and if you are new here, I would absolutely love it if you could subscribe to my channel to see more from me. So in today's video, I am going to be talking a bit about how to prepare for a PhD Viva. Now this is the ultimate, this is the last, the last hurdle before you get that doctorate for your doctor. Although I dreaded the Viva so much during my PhD and I did, I was absolutely pushing it to the latest that I possibly could be, it was the process that I actually enjoyed the most and it's something that doesn't have to be daunting and it's not meant to be scary and hopefully by the end of today's video I'll be giving you a complete plan and a complete schedule for being able to prepare for your Viva in just 10 days. This video is brought to you by The Page Doctor and if you don't already know The Page Doctor is my own personal company. It's your go-to academic website for all things education so for anything that you might need be it planning for an essay or a Viva preparation, let me know. Do visit thepagedoctor.com to book yourself in. It's important to understand what the point of a Viva is, because I think this really helps with actually being able to study and revise for it. So there's sort of three main aims of the Viva. The first is to be able to ensure that you are the person that actually wrote your thesis. If you're the person that's written that thesis, which you are, then you definitely understand it because you've gone through all the effort of writing your literature review and going through the process of trying to figure out where your results fit into the current literature, then of course you understand it. So again, that's something that you shouldn't really worry about too much. And lastly, it's to ensure that your work is worth a PhD. And for work to be worth a PhD, it must contribute something original to a field. So it just has to be something that hasn't been found before and is something substantial enough to either be published or is, is original. So something new that hasn't been found or researched or published before. As long as you can check off those three points, you should be absolutely okay. And that's the first thing that I want to kind of come across. Your work needs to be novel, it needs to have a strong hypothesis and your results need to back up that hypothesis and demonstrate what you set out to achieve and the methods that you, you, you took to get there and how you actually got there. So as I mentioned earlier, I've made a 10 day plan for you, which you can find on the Page Doctor blog post and I'll leave a link for it down below and um, fill in the details with your dates and times and the things that you want to revise through yourself. Figure out where you've got 10 days to spare or 10 free days that you can dedicate to revising or preparing even for your Viva. Now, if you're not able to do 10 full days then maybe do 20 half days, for example, um, but try to fit, fit in 10 days for this. So on day one, you want to familiarize yourself with your supervisor's work. Make sure that you know what work is going on in your lab. Now I know that sounds really obvious, um, but for a lab like mine, for example, there were different projects going on with a sort of similar theme running through them, but very different methods. So ensure that you know what your supervisor's research interests are, what kind of methods they tend to do, and sort of what their reasons are for choosing certain methods. So this is probably like, this is probably something that you already have done quite a lot in the past as a result of being in that particular lab group or as a result of being under your supervisor but just make sure that you're aware of sort of the work that they've published um, recently when doing this ensure that you're always trying to find the papers or the research that's as relevant to yours as possible then on day two and day three, you want to familiarize yourself with your examiner's work. Now you probably have, well you should have two examiners, one internal examiner and one external examiner. And you want to familiarize yourself with their work. Now you're probably a lot less familiar with their work than you are with your supervisor's work, unless you unless you know them really well. Um, but what you want to do when you do this is try to find papers um, that they've published that have some similarity to your work. That could be topic wise, so it could be looking at a certain um, aspect of your topic, it could be something to do with the methods um, or something to do with the hypothesis. It really depends on sort of why you've chosen those supervisors. Um, so, you know, in this case, one shoe is not going to fit all. Why they've chosen certain methods and why they haven't chosen other methods and what the hypothesis were and sort of their results and their limitations. Because what they're going to do, if, remember, remember that they're human at the end of the day, they don't know your project as well as you do. You're the one person that knows your work um, inside and out. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna try and relate their research to yours. So if you've used a certain method, they're gonna say, right, 
when have I used that method before and what has happened and then they'll try to bounce that off of you or they might try to interrogate you a little bit more if they don't understand that method because they haven't used it before so you need to constantly like try so you need to constantly be looking through their papers and trying to find out maybe in the past five years or so what have they re researched what have they published what methods have they used and um, what are they what are their hypotheses what is their re what are their research interests and if you're stuck and I think I was a bit stuck with mine if you're stuck just ask yourself supervisor I asked my supervisor um, for some help and he told me right this examiner is really interested in actin filaments particularly interested in how they nucleate I was really focused on trying to make sure that I could um, sort of describe and explain any issues or any results that I had to do with filament to do with actin filaments in particular so just ask your supervisor if you're stuck like what do you think this examiner um, knows or what do you think this examiner might probe me on a bit more than another examiner then on day four you want to do a more general literature search now it's probably been a few months possibly since you did a, a literature search on your topic and there may be papers that have been published that are really important and change the game for you but you haven't come across them because you haven't looked on PubMed um, so spend a day just looking through the literature to see if there's anything that has been recently published that could change things for you now that's absolutely fine like if a paper publishes something that you didn't know and would have impacted your work that's not a big deal you're not going to fail because of that it just means that you need to be aware of it and when your examiners say oh I think there was a paper recently because bear in mind they've looked at your thesis a couple weeks ago so they've probably done a literature search but after you have so they might say oh I saw there was a paper that was published last month about this if you're there saying oh was there like I didn't know that that doesn't look very good because you should be the expert in your field up until you graduate and up until you're done with your thesis so until you are done with your PhD you are the expert in your field and so it's really important to make sure that you are the expert and so you you can't be thrown off by anyone suggesting that there's a paper out there that you didn't know and when you're looking for literature just try to figure out sort of how that might how this result might change things for your paper how this result might change things for your research and sort of where your research stands in the current literature and where like sort of what gaps does your research fill so this probably takes you this takes you up to sort of about about five days five six days depending on how how long you take on this so the next sort of week and so the next sort of five days five six days is based on your thesis you're just looking at your thesis through a microscope and just trying to anticipate any questions that you might be asked now I'm gonna break down each day for each chapter so from day five or day six you want to spend one day on each chapter so like I said I'll leave the link for it down below so please feel free to go and click on it to see exactly what it is that you um, need to do for each of these days so of course you've got your introduction you've got your methods you've got your results and then you've got your conclusion discussion so that's about four um, chapters that's about four days but on top of that you also want to focus on sort of previous work so what's out there already sort of your theoretical framework why is it that you're doing what you're doing what is the basis of that research and your hypotheses these are ideas and and kind of parts of your research that you have to really feel and be solid about so I've generated a bit of a chapter plan so feel free to again go and download that to see exactly what you need to complete but you want to firstly summarize each chapter so what is if you can write in about 200 words or so what is the summary of this chapter because that is a question that they might ask you you want to make sure that you are able to define anything that you've written about if you've mentioned a certain protein what is the size of this protein like I was asked that question what is the size of this protein if you have mentioned a certain method then you need to be able to explain how that method works I was asked about how does an electron microscope work because I use electron microscopy quite a lot so I was asked about that and that's a GCSE question that students are taught at 15 16 years old but it's something that because it was a fundamental part of my research I had to be able to explain it so don't skip over these things and make sure that you're able to define every single thing that you have mentioned in your thesis make sure that you are able to explain what any paper that you have cited in your thesis is talking about so 
I, again, I was asked this, it so this sounds crazy because there's probably hundreds of references that you've mentioned, but if, especially if you've discussed it at some length and you've mentioned it a few times over, then you're most likely going to be asked, can you explain sort of what this person, what these authors did um, and why they did it and sort of why, how that relates to your work. So again, I mean, you should have read all the papers that you've cited. You shouldn't really be referencing something that you haven't read, but if you feel like you just need to go over some like top 10 or top 20 papers that are relevant for the chapters that you're, you're looking at, then definitely make sure you do that because you don't want to be caught out. If the examiner asks you, can you explain what these these authors did, um, and then you say, I don't know. It, that, that doesn't look very good at all. Then you want to kind of bullet point a few discussion points for each of these chapters. So for your methods, what is what are, what are the main methods? What are the reasons why you did those methods? What, what are the limitations for these methods? Sort of the main discussion points that you think you might be asked about. For the results, what are the key results? How could things be different? How did you analyze? Um, sort of just the key points for each of these chapters. I, I mean, most supervisors do this, but I found that as my supervisor was editing um, and reading through my thesis, he would write questions on the side. So he would say something like, um, this is this is something that you might be asked during your viva. This is something that you might be asked during your viva. Um, you need to explain why, and you might be asked this during your viva. So there were loads of sort of tips and hints for questions that might be asked first four to five days are familiarizing yourself with your examiner and your supervisor's work and then the next sort of five to six days are familiarizing yourself with your own thesis and making sure that you can un explain and understand everything inside and out including all the papers that you might have discussed or mentioned within your thesis. And then the last day or two depending on sort of how much time you have is just kind of reviewing general questions. So a general question is something like, can you summarize your thesis? That's a very general question and that's something that you most likely will be asked. Can you summarize your thesis? So you need to be able to say a summary of your thesis in a couple of minutes, like you don't have that long, like a couple of minutes. And then they might say something like, can you now explain it in one sentence or in two sentences? Or what is the key result from your thesis? So these are more general questions that sort of everyone's asked. Another one, a very common one is what is your what was your research question or what was your hypothesis or what were your aims or what was the gap that you were trying to fill or something like what is the main issue or the main debate in your field and sort of why are uh, why how does your paper relate to that um, and so sort of there are, these are more general questions and there are loads of uh, resources out there on the internet and I'll leave some links for them down below for um, where to look for those general questions. Again, just print them out, write down what your answers for those questions will be. Even if you're not asked those questions, um, you most likely will be asked a couple of them, but even if you're not asked all of them, it will help you think about your, your work and your research in a different way and it would definitely help you with answering maybe a different question later on really thinking about your research as a whole and how your research fits in to the literature like what gap does it fill what is the original content that you have created what is the original work that you have um, revealed uh, and sort of what why you your whole way through you're trying to justify why your research merits a PhD it's a PhD is the highest level of education. So you need to ensure that you're constantly trying to justify and show off because you know what you've done is amazing. Like you spent so many years on this small thing and you've identified something new um, and you're adding to the wealth of knowledge out there. So you really need to just make sure that you're communicating that in the best way possible. So I hope that you found that helpful and good luck with your Viva. I'm sure you'll do amazingly. It really isn't as scary as you think it is. Um, when I entered my Viva, the examiner said, look, this is just a chat. Like, we're happy with your work. It's just a chat. And it, that really made me feel at ease. And I think even if your examiner doesn't say that, for the most part, that's probably the case. If you've got this far and you've written your thesis and you've submitted it and everything, like you're most likely 90%, 96 actually, the actual number is 96% of PhD students pass their viva. So that is a staggering, staggeringly high number. So definitely do not worry at all. Um, just try to focus on trying to prepare and make sure that you're able to um, discuss your research in the best way possible, which I'm sure you can because you've done 
presentations and posters and all sorts of things in the past so just keep that confidence up and just imagine you were in a in a little seminar of two people <laughs> good luck and i'll see you guys in my next one bye